Hi, this is Fernando. In this video tutorial, I want to share with you three useful tips of Gitray. Um, the first tip is about image sample. Um, I found that in the forum we have a bunch of issues with the noise, uh, some weird noise in the image sample or in the scene, especially when you have blurry um, reflections and refractions. Basically, that issue is because the image sample. Uh, in order to show you what issue I'm talking about, I'm going to change the image sample to Adaptive Subdivision and make my first render. I'm going to click Render and pause the video to save time. Here we go. This is the final render. <coughs> As you can see here, I have, we have a weird spot noisy on my ceiling. This is because my, my um, wall texture has some reflections. Also, you can see how ugly is my floor in terms of noise. This is because we have a bad anti-aliasing solution. Remember that the anti-aliasing not only affects the edges of the um, uh, geometry, but also the textures, um, the reflection and refractions. That's why um, we have uh, this kind of noisy. So that means that the image uh, adaptive subdivision is not a good solution when you have um, reflection, reflect, uh, refractions, and blurry reflections, um, and depth field. So instead of using an adaptive subdivision, we should use adaptive DMC in our image sample solution. So I'm going to make another render and pause the video again. Here we go. This is the final render. As you can see, we don't have the, the blurry reflection that we have before so the noise the weird noise that we have before my scene is, is clean and better so tips number one if you have blurry reflection refraction material depth field um, you should use adaptive DMC instead of adaptive subdivision okay the next um, tips is about samples in the maps and I'm going to make a close-up of the legs. The sample in the Iridium maps um, basically blurry uh, the samples, the, the solution. If you uh, increase this sample too much, you can blurry too much your solution and you can erase some shadows, especially the contact shadows on the floor and the shares uh, um, should appear floating in the floating in the in the air so I'm gonna make my first render by letting the samples to 20 and also I'm going to override because it's better to see when I have override my material in my scene um, I'm going to override my material and create my first render okay I'm going to pause the video here we go this is the final render you can see here in my render how I have a bunch of contact shadows here. Um, in every single leg, I have contact shadows. I see a bunch of contact shadows here. So this is because my sample are not uh, blurry. My shadows in terms of erase the shadows. Okay, so I'm going to uh, increase the samples to 90. I do that because we have a bunch of users that do that in order to avoid the splotchiness in the wall but this is not the right solution maybe you have to increase the hemisphere subdivision or also the minimum rate in order to avoid the splotchiness on the wall and not increase too much the sample because you can erase uh, the shadows as well so um, I increase the uh, samples to 20 and I'm going to make another render here we go, this is the final render. As you can see here, these legs and also these legs, and even this one appear to be floating in the air. You can see here, they, they, they don't have any contact shadows at all. Um, neither this one. Um, I want to show you the difference between the this image when I increase uh, samples to, 20, to 90 and the other image. Uh, I think it's this one. You can see the contact shadows here contact shadows and also contact shadows here the difference between this one and this one hopefully you can appreciate it in the video but you can see 
contact shadows and no contact shadows so this is going to help you uh, to get your object in the floor second tips do not increase too much the samples because you can blurry or erase some shadows especially on the small details okay and the last tips is in terms of the material okay uh, in terms of the material we have a lot of question about how to tint the reflections in the material some user try to tint the reflection using the, the reflections color uh, and this is the tips the reflections color is not to tint the reflection is just to change the amount of reflections you can use uh, mapping in inside the reflections in order to control the amount of reflection like a Fresnel's effect or also you can have a flat reflections without any texture at all and just control the amount of reflection using the color here of the reflections white is completely uh, reflective And, and black is completely opaque, right? Black is completely opaque. But if you want to control or to tint the reflections a little bit, I'm going to use a medium gray, so I have a kind of reflections. But if you want to tint the reflection, you have to use a filter. For example, I'm going to use an orange filter. Now, I can tint the reflections. You can see the area where I have reflections now are uh, orange. If I reduce the blurriness to 0.75, I still tint the reflections a little bit. If I use a front else, ten right to create metals, more than three are metals. I click a preview. Now I can get kind of um, anodized um, material. Okay. Just use the filter to tint the reflections and not the reflections color. Okay, this is the third um, tips. Hopefully, I hope you can enjoy this video. And this is all what I have for you today. Okay, bye bye. See you next time.